Welcome to TE Destinations. I'm your host, Rob, and I'm here with one of TE's fabulous guides of Florence, Angelo. Hi, Rob. How are you? Good, Angelo. How are you? I'm good. I'm excellent, actually. Wonderful. You are looking lovely as ever. <laughs> okay, thank you. So today we are going to be covering all the highlights of Florence in a day. We're going to cover the Duomo, David by Michelangelo, uh -huh. Ponte Vecchio, and much more. So, andiamo? Andiamo. We may not have a room with a view, but we certainly do have a drone with a view. We can get to Florence from Rome in a one and a half hour train ride to arrive to the Cradle of the Renaissance. A cathedral, Duomo in Italian, was not only a place of spiritual worship, but a place to represent the power, wealth, and hope of its citizens. Not to be outdone by Pisa and its famous leaning church bell tower, a multi-tiered polychrome wonder done by the great artist Giotto got involved with this early 700-year-old version of a skyscraper. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I am afraid of heights, but I won't back down from a challenge. Take a look at Brunelleschi's dome, one of the first heralded into the modern era, and still the largest brick dome ever built. I think we need to get up a bit higher and go beyond even the bats and the bells in the belfry. Now this is the perfect day and the best possible view. Look at the lantern of the dome. The people there are only protected by that tiny little fence. Glad I'm on the tower. We met up with TE guide and fashion icon, Angelo. The Academia. Did you know that when Michelangelo worked, he really felt that he was freeing figures from the block of marble? These were originally for a tomb for a pope, and they are known as a slaves that seem to be struggling to be released from stone. The Academy also has some other works in its collection. Look at these bozzetti. Did you notice the black dots? A way that they could measure exactly from the rough drafts of the statues to help sculptors carve out what they had done in a softer material. Here are the end results. The ideal man, and arguably one of the greatest statues ever created. A perfect expression of the genius and sheer force of Michelangelo, who took an infamously difficult piece of marble and created a miracle stemming from the classical pagan world and put into a biblical modern renaissance context. After such an experience, I dare say it's time for lunch break and Angelo leads us to a wonderful place. It's always better to know a local to get to the best restaurants. Truly scrumptious, and Florence definitely has many delicacies not to be missed. Now Angelo will be taking us to the Civic Center of Florence with its amazing and unique Palazzo Signoria. Here we are in the Piazza della Signoria in the heart of Florence. Angelo, please tell us a little bit about this. Yes, Rob, this is an open air museum. Right behind me, we have the palace, the Signoria Palace. Uh, the, the palace of the power of Florence since the 1200. And then you can see over there the loggia. It's an art museum. You can see statues over there. The best one ever, in my opinion, is actually the statue of Perseus by Benvenuto Cellini. Wonderful piece of art. It's bronze. That's amazing. Yes. That if you check the back of the head of the hero Perseus, you will be able to see the self-portrait of the artist Benvenuto Cellini. So you pay attention that you know the beard of actually Perseus and the curly hair will be actually the beard of, of Cellini and then the helmet is actually the, um, the structure that then lets you see the portrait, the self-portrait of the artist. Now we're on a search for some gold, the Ponte Vecchio, one of the few remaining bridges built like this still standing today. So here we are in the famous Ponte Vecchio. Angelo, can you tell us, is this the best place to buy gold? What is so famous about the yes, bridge? Yes, it is. This is actually, this was the meat market of Florence. Uh -huh. And then in the 1500s, everything changed. You can see that all now is jewelers. And that because of a very incredible thing, a secret passageway that went up to the top, a secret street just for the Medici family back in the 1500s. Almost half mile of private street just for them. We call the corridor. That don't walk in there, they just get carried. Because they were too important, they don't even walk. Of course not. So you're saying when that was built, the meat here turned to gold. Yeah. And so yeah. Like water that turns to wine. <laughs> These were actually the offices for the Medici family, which then became the place to store their artwork. Let's see what they have inside. Masterpieces, masterpieces, masterpieces. 
from the great Giotto, the picture-perfect profiles of Piero della Francesca, the breathtaking beauty of Botticelli, to the worst hairstyle ever. <clears throat> Let's get back on track. Where were we? Ah, yes to Raphael's progenitor Perugino, all leading up to none other than the divine Da Vinci. And not to forget this lovely hidden gem of a room called the Tribuna. After that, I feel like I could be carried like a Medici across the famous corridor, but I guess I could be okay. content to have a nice glass of Chianti. Thanks for watching our video. And a special thanks to Through Eternity Tours. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click on the bell when you want to be notified of any other new content that we have uploaded. Ciao.